Hi everyone, John here. I just thought I'd do a uh, COVID-19 update and uh, the good news, well it's sort of good and bad news, it's not really bad news, but it's, a, it's good for Victoria as far as um, Melbourne's concerned, if every, everybody's known about what's, what's happened uh, with myself and everyone else that, uh, that lives in Melbourne. Um, we went through a lockdown for, for a very long time and um, it was it was quite difficult and all the rest but uh, I think uh, we've had nearly 60 days of uh, no new cases which is really good um, and no deaths of course which is the best thing of all um, and then the the borders open up again uh, not to go overseas but to to be able to go um, interstate and, and families and everybody can can, can visit and people they haven't seen for a long time can see each other again which is really good but uh, of course then New South Wales um, had an outbreak because of uh, a cluster that occurred in the northern beaches um, which is uh, which is a bit sad you know but um, they've been getting maybe 10 or so cases a day uh, most of them are linked to the cluster, which is good, uh, because then that's traceable. Remember, in my previous videos, that you would have known that uh, if you were going to have a cluster that could be linked back, uh, then you can find the names and addresses and all the rest. And if they've come into contact with anyone, then you can find the names and addresses of them. And you can keep it under control uh, through tracking, you know. So, but. Um, this time, uh, they are getting a couple of cases that uh, uh, in the community, which therefore you, you don't you don't know where they've come from. So, when you might only get one or two cases each each day, that's from the community, and you think, well, that's not a lot. But the thing is, they may have already spread, you know, to twenty other people, and then you don't seem like that's a lot, but. Uh, or you don't think it's a lot, but then of course, then it travels to um, that 20 turns into 100 people. So you, you know, hopefully that never happens. But uh, so of course, then of course they close the borders again. So um, and, and and rightly so. I mean, I, I understood when they when they closed the borders to us. It's just that uh, I suppose back then I had a little bit of a problem with uh, when I used to talk about the, the Ruby Princess debacle that happened in. In Sydney and they were very very fortunate that everything was li linked back to a cluster so coming off a ship they had all their names and addresses uh, so they could contact those people straight away and get them to be tested or uh, and if they had the, the virus they could be they could be isolated uh, well we, did, we didn't have that such luxury and of course it was in the community and it spread like wildfire and as you all know a lot of people unnecessarily died and um, so that's been hard on families and a, a lot of other people lost their jobs and a lot of other people uh, have st are still not working and a lot of businesses closed down so but uh, my point is that now that uh, this is happening in another state I don't want it to get any worse but I just do hope that they understand that when they wanted to close the borders and was a bit naive to the, the fact and they, were, they weren't really worried about anyone else except their own state. I hope now that they realise that it, it can happen to anybody. And, um, and now we know that it can go more than, when we quarantine for 14 days, it can go longer than 14 days. Uh, some people now have um, been in contact with people that could have had the virus and they haven't showed any symptoms until the 10th or the 11th day so uh, but we because we've got a lot of tracking devices and all the rest now uh, in Sydney and in Melbourne as well in uh, venues restaurants and so forth that uh, we were able to uh, to catch up on this so look I really hope that it doesn't get any worse and I hope that uh, things get better I don't think it'll get better for for New South Wales and I think the Premier herself is saying that it's not going to be a, a normal 
New Year's Eve or New Year's Day. I don't think that they can get a lot of people together. Um, which is really, really hard. Um, of course, the other states have opened up to, would you believe it, to Victoria, <laughs> which we were the worst and we were shut out from every state. But now every state has, has opened up to us. So um, the thing is as well that I think what everyone's got to um, understand, it can happen again uh, as it is happening in other countries. I remember when I think it was uh, New Zealand did the right thing and they went into uh, a very strict lockdown for a shorter period of time, but it, um, I think they went about 60 days or something like that with, um, without, without a new case, you know. But then all of a sudden they, they got a few new cases, so, and, um, and then of course you have the, uh, the problem where Again, if it's not linked back to a cluster, it's in the community. Has it been spreading for all this time that they haven't had any cases, you know? So, same thing that happened in Victoria, which uh, uh, anyone that's watched my previous videos would know that when we got down to about six or seven cases or something, we thought that we were okay, but uh, we didn't know that it was spreading for that period of time in the community. So. Look, I really hope that it doesn't happen. Uh, I hope that things get better for, for Sydney. Of course, I did hear, I think it was, um, I think it was in, in, in Spain or Italy, I'm not 100% sure, but they just announced their 500th death, which is um, pretty hard to comprehend, you know. Um, a lot of sad people around the world losing losing people that they love uh, and of course if you're getting 500,000 deaths then you, you're getting probably you know millions of cases so uh, I know that now of course I think in you know, America now they're, they're bringing out the, the new Pfizer vaccine which I think is from Germany of course, that's getting rolled out to the frontline workers and uh, the older people, which, which so it should be first. Uh, of, of course, uh, England is, is getting, I think, the, the Pfizer vaccine as well. The same thing's happening there. Um, but they've gone into another lockdown as well, and I think Italy's gone into another lockdown. Um, so, it uh, and I think in, uh, England was saying that uh, they're their new, new strain that they have of the virus is actually like 10 times stronger than the, than the previous strain of virus. Uh, I think they only had a couple of people that have caught the virus, but um, it's 10 times more deadly, which is, I mean, you know, the amount of people that it's already affected and how fast it affects now the virus that we currently have and how many people that it, it can... Uh, it can kill and has killed. To be 10 times more is, 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 is unbelievable. So, But of course, I think this virus that's come from Pfizer, um, they're saying that really you need to have like two doses. I think it's only about 70% effective. So if you take half a dose first, and then I think maybe a week later or something, you take then a full dose, it's something like 90% 90, 90 effective. So we'll probably see more as uh, time goes on, of course, Australia was, was actually uh, ahead with the virus, but then we, we had some uh, people that was, uh, it was coming up as um, detecting like HIV in, in some of the virus testing and everything. So they knocked that on the head. Um, of course, there's another um, vaccine that Australia is currently testing. So I... I I don't doubt that um, we'll probably see more than one virus and you'll probably be offered more than, oh, sorry, uh, more than one vaccine and you'll probably be offered um, more than one vaccine, um, not just the one. The other problem with the Pfizer one as well is that, that it's okay to distribute them uh, like in America and over in Europe and England and whatnot. but. Uh, 
has to be like something like minus 50 or 60 degrees centigrade or something uh, and only has like a, a lifespan of five days or something so I think that's a bit of a problem to to travel to Australia considering that we're the furthest country away from everybody else so um, I, I think we're we're uh, we're in line to receive some of them. Um, I think uh, I'm not too sure if, if actually we can uh, get it from Pfizer or it has to be shipped out here or there's a better way of doing it or we might just end up with uh, our own uh, vaccine um, or another vaccine from somewhere else that's uh, a little bit more adaptable to trying to get it over to countries like Australia and of course um, you've got all the islands and all the rest are around Australia as well as New Zealand uh, I mean New Zealand's not far away from us as well so you know it's just the same New Zealand or Australia we're the furthest countries away from everybody so uh, you never know we'll see what happens um, so we've been told here that We probably won't see a vaccine here until next March, and that'll be the frontline workers will receive that first, and the older people, of course, and rightly so. So I think maybe it won't be until maybe June next year until everybody actually has the a vaccine here in Australia, because I think you know they could probably only roll it out at two or three hundred thousand people a day. So. I think Australia's got about 25 million people, so it's going to take a long time. So, but um, I feel um, really sad for a lot of the other countries that are, even though there's a vaccine being rolled out, um, there's still people dying around the world. So, and um, I have heard of some people that I know that have gone and travelled from country to country. I don't know how they've been able to do that because uh, uh, I know you can go to another country and quarantine. I mean, maybe they've paid a little bit extra money or something for to certain airlines because I know that uh, our airline in Australia that they just won't. Um, they'll bring people back to Australia that are, are stuck overseas, but they won't just let you go and travel to another country and go and stay in another country. So. Most people that have been able to do that, I mean, good luck. I mean, maybe you paid a lot of money, I don't know. But um, I think what everyone here really wants to do, if, if uh, what we're waiting for is, is, of course, the borders to be able to open, of course. The airlines to, to uh, let us travel. And I think most airlines are asking for people to have a, a vaccine before they travel because... Logistically, it's 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 a headache. It's a nightmare for for uh, airlines. So, um, that for a few people to travel, I think it's probably okay, and they go on quarantine. And that's okay. But I think to when things are up and running again, um, I think that they would want to, everyone to have a vaccine and probably have proof that you've got a vaccine. And the country that you're travelling to would probably want proof that you have. And of course, we would be also waiting for that our country and whatever country we visit, we don't have to quarantine as well. So, because otherwise, it's not worth going anywhere. So, but, but the good news is that we're getting closer. Now, the bad news is it's taken a very long time. So, all the people that we love around the world, um, uh, just to let you know, which uh, I love someone very dearly in Thailand. So. I'll be there one day, <laughs> not now, but I'll be there. And for everyone else that wants to travel, uh, I hope that's uh, sooner and later, sooner than later for, for everyone else, so they can visit the people that they care about. But anyway, uh, everyone stay safe and please subscribe to my channel. And uh, thank you for listening.